than to discuss key elements of the peace agreement. As the Kosovars were saying yes to peace, Serbia stationed 40,000 troops in and around Kosovo in preparation for a major offensive and in clear violation of the commitments they had made. Now they've started moving from village to village, shelling civilians and torching their houses. We've seen innocent people taken from their homes, forced to kneel in the dirt and sprayed with bullets. Kosovar men dragged from their families, fathers and sons together, lined up and shot in cold blood. Beginning in the late 1980s, the communist regime that dominated most of East Europe began to collapse in a spectacular fashion. One of the most dramatic and violent of these collapses was in the former Yugoslavia, which over the course of 1990s broke apart in numerous different nation states. One of these regions that desired independence was Kosovo. Their northern neighbors, Serbia, had other ideas. The resulting conflict turned into one of the bloodiest and most tragic events in Europe since World War II. When we look back at the genocide, ultranationalism is one of the big playing factors that has caused it. Ultranationalism, when embraced by the people and the state, give leniency to abuse against those who are not part of their perceived nation. Ultranationalism is the cause of the genocide to the extent where the peaceful protests for reform in response to hardships turn into violent riots because of the disrespect of the ultranationalists or the refusal of the demands of these people which turn into massive political, cultural, geographical dispute between two groups of people. Ultranationalism will cause one group of people to forcibly take what they believe is theirs, for example in the Kosovo incident, taking the Kosovo region by force from the Muslim Albanians, putting their own interest and gain over others. The moment where one group seriously considers a violent approach instead of a peaceful approach in radicals and begins to use their resentment as a reason for violence against another group deemed less important than theirs is the moment where ultranationalism is the definite cause of genocide. In this video, we'll be describing Kosovo genocide and how and the five inquiry questions that goes behind what really happened during that time. The Kosovo conflict, which was during the 1998 to 1999, in which ethnic Albanians opposed ethnic Serbs and the government of Yugoslavia, which at that time was the backbone of the former federal state, consisting of the republics of Serbia and the Montenegro. Important political figures involved were Josip Broz Tito, former president of Yugoslavia, president of Serbia, Slobodan Milosevic, and the president of Kosovo at that time, who was Ibrahim Rugova the first president of Republic of Kosovo. The ethnic cleansing of Muslim Albanians from Kosovo and the genocide of Albanians was in retaliation of the Kosovo Liberation Army, attacking Serbian police forces and the KLA attempting to attain independence. Furthermore, Serbia took control of Kosovo media and schools causing Kosovo nationalism. Serbia considered Kosovo to be part of their heritage and identified since in the late 1300s, many Orthodox Serbians fought Muslim Ottoman soldiers near Peristina, Kosovo. Kosovo is the graveyard of many Serbian ancestors, however the majority Albanian Muslim population that were remnants of the Ottoman Empire felt culturally tied to the land which fueled geographical and cultural nationalism for Albanian majority living in Kosovo, and they wanted to be independent of Serbia. Before the dissolution of Yugoslavia, Josip Broz Tito, the president of Yugoslavia, gave autonomy to Kosovo which kept them content even when Croatia and Slovenia began to fight for their independence. However, following Tito's death, nationalist Solvedan 
Mil Solbeck, took away those special privileges given to Kosovo because of his strong nationalism and his belief that Kosovo is a Serbian territory. Slobodan, as the leader of the League of Communists, imposed a police state on the region of Kosovo, causing many ethnic Albanians to become unemployed to allow for the Serbs to find a job in the workforce. Slobodan's ultranationalistic belief put the interest of Serbians over the ethnic Albanians inhabiting the Kosovo region, causing non-violent protests against Serbian control to become into a full-out war between the Albanians and the Serbs. His primary interest was more stronger and unified Serbia that included the Serbian minority in Kosovo and the Kosovo land. Many ask, why the genocide? After the armed uprising by the Kosovo Liberation Army, the KLA, Serbian Special Force and the Yugoslav Armed Forces tried to regain control of the disputed region of Serbia. Atrocities committed by the police, parliamentary group and the army caused a wave of refugees in that area to flee and this situation became very well publicized. After that, the contact group, which is the informal coalition of the United States, Great Britain, Germany, France, Italy, and Russia, decided to demand a ceasefire, the withdrawal of Yugoslav and the Serbian forces from Kosovo, the return of the refugees, and unlimited access for international monitor. This was agreed upon by Milosevic after he became president of Yugoslavia in 1997. However, he never implemented these systems, which led to the KLA regrouping and, during its ceasefire, renewed its attack leading to the Yugoslav and Serbian forces' its ruthless counter-offensive and engagement in a program of ethnic cleansing. This violence would still continue even after the UN commended the excessive use of force and imposed an arms embargo. The ethnic cleansing of the Albanians may not have been possible to completely prevent, but the possibilities to mitigate the death of the Albanians and the Serbians is possible. The abuses might have been prevented if Solbadan did not aggravate the Albanian majority by fueling their nationalism by stripping them of their power and rights as by refusing to acknowledge them as an independent country and turning the region into a police state. Kosovo was a largely undisturbed and relatively peaceful when it was given autonomy, even when other Balkan regions started to fight for ind independence. Immediately following the ethnic cleansing of Albanians, the international community could have threatened to persecute Serbia for their atro atrocities. They could have also placed trade sanctions in retaliation of the genocide of Albanians to discourage further killing of Albanians. Another way the abuse might have been prevented is if Rub Govo, the leader of the ethnic Albanians, comprised with Serbia by giving them a chunk of the northern Kosovo, which had a large minority population of Serbians relative to the rest of the province, which may have quelled the Serbians' unrest and their nationalistic feelings in relation to Kosovo. If USA simply stopped sending arms to the KLA, they would have not been able to resist the Serbian army, who would not have to kill the Albanians. And that's one of the big ways that it could have been prevented. Nationalism should be pursued as long as it unites and sets apart boundaries created between nations. It ties people with common identities to their land and in many countries it shares a common understanding of the native language. Although nationalism can be seen as the inclusion of everyone into the same group, at times it can also look good on paper but in reality always ends in calamity and or carnage. It is seen as mostly negative throughout the history of humanity. 
If we look at World War I, Serbian nationalism was a major factor since it led to the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand, thus initiating World War I. Nationalism also played a big role in World War II, in which Germany, Italy, and Japan wanted to expand their land masses and gain resources to the market while simultaneously invading and destroying other nations in other countries. Nationalism can be very destructive in some cases, however, it is also a great tool that can lead to a more cohesive society. Nationalism is neither a good force or a bad force. It could be good or evil as it can both be depending on the perspective you are viewing it from. Although nationalism can cause certain groups of people to mistreat others for reasons being good or evil depending on the perspective. Nationalism under certain circumstances can become ultranationalism and promote violent and hatred against other people, promoting horrific acts against them. In the same way, nationalism can cause people to unite and cause their nation to be prosperous and be considered a force of good. It can also be the cause of certain groups such as the Serbians to ethically cleanse the Albanians living in the Kosovo, which may be considered evil if you're looking from the perspective of an ethnic Albanian. However, if all acts of violence, regardless of their intent, was their means were to be considered evil, then nationalism would be a force of evil, as it eventually compels others to prioritize their own interests over someone else's, causing acts of violence under special circumstances, those circumstances being economic, cultural, political, or any other hardship that may cause a feeling of ultranationalism to be born. Eight stages of the Kosovo genocide. The eight stages of genocide help helps identify key elements in understanding the genocidal process, which is essential in preventing future genocides. Stage one, classification. There was a power struggle between the Serbian and Albanian over Kosovo that existed since the 10th century. Numerous wars and rivalries over years have provided enough fuel to begin the genocide. Since there was an ethnic division between the Serbians and Albanians forever, the classification began far before the genocide occurred. Stage 2, Symbolization. Little symbolization was used to discriminate and distinguish between the Serbians and the Albanians, except for the insignias that combatants wore to distinguish who the KLA combatants were and the Serbian combatants were. Stage 3, Dehumanization. Discrimination and dehumanization occurred earlier with the Serbians actively working to oppress the Albanians and attempt to foster hate for Albanians. Tactics such as dehumanizing them by using propaganda, spreading false news using radio and TV stations, forging false images were used to dehumanize the Albanians, make it seem okay to kill them. Furthermore, Milosevic purposely instigated newspaper shortages to stop certain true news to reach the Serbian citizens. Stage 4. Organization Serbia smuggled arms outside its borders to give to the military to execute Albanians. Serbia forced the migration of Albanians out of Kosovo, forcing them into Turkey and other regions. Military groups such as the KLA and the Serbian army were assembled to deal with this conflict ordered by the government. Stage 5. Polarization Propaganda was used to further divide the two groups, with the Serbians attacking the Albanians saying they had killed their people as more false news stories were being published. The Kosovo bars were also silenced during this time, but the false newspaper shortages put in place to prevent information from spreading and to keep them quiet. Stage 6, Preparation. Serbia's president, Slobodan, took away Kosovo's autonomy and took control of its media, education, and religious places. Albanians are separate from the Kosovo region through ethnic cleansing and military forces. Stage 7, Extermination. Before the genocide, persecution of Albanians was committed by ensuring Kosovars lost their ability to speak the language, to teach at schools, and experience their culture. 
the extermination began shortly after 40,000 troops were positioned in and around the country. Important Kosovar deification documents were destroyed by the Serbians, leaving them vulnerable, and women were specifically targeted in the killings and violence. 1.5 million Kosovar Albanians were killed, and it was estimated that this was around 90% of the population at the time. Stage 8 Denial Slobodan did not deny the genocide. However, he was put on trial for war crimes. Serbians, however, did use the word ethnic cleansing instead of genocide to downplay the atrocities that were committed. Furthermore, Serbian fighters that were put on trial for killing 118 Albanian civilians denied guilt as they say that they were defending the territory from terrorists. With the evidence presented in the Kosovo conflict, it is easy to see how it continued to escalate to a genocide. Hopefully, humanity can learn from the Kosovo conflict and be able to prevent future genocides like the one in Kosovo ever happening again.